Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. We just had an exciting situation <laughs> happen. Um, I was taking the dogs outside and Tucker ran out when there was like this much of the door cracked open and it was so, it's so cold outside you guys. It's gotten really, really chilly and um, I couldn't get the rest of the sliding glass door open. It got stuck. And I was talking to my husband on the phone at the same time. So Tucker ran outside and he was like, you know, going potty. And Boo Radley's in here and he can't get out. And he's like barking to get outside. And then Tucker comes back up and Tucker's barking to get inside. Boo Radley was barking to get out. He couldn't figure out how to get out. And I've got this door that's like this. It won't move. And Alex is like, you have to take the door off the hinges and replace it and put it back. It's like this whole mess, right? So I had to go out the front door all the way around. I had to go get Tucker, lift the door up off the thing, put it inside, re-put the door. I had to fix the whole door and everything so that it was aligned, so that well, like the, the bolt locks and everything would go on there. It's just, it was a, such a mess, you guys. And it's so cold outside. So then when I got that all done, then I was like, okay, well now Boo Radley has to come outside. So just one of those things that happens in life, isn't it? So, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> So we came inside and um, I lit candles everywhere. So now the house smells fantastic and we're getting ready to settle in for our uh, beautiful Friday night. All right, let's get into, hold on, you wanna come over here? You wanna come over here, Boo Radley? You wanna be in the video? Come on, honey. Come here, bud. He said, well, I guess so. I mean, if I'm gonna be invited, I might wanna come into the, you wanna come into the video? He's so shy, isn't he so sweet? What do you, what do you wanna talk about today? He said, I want to talk about how much I love my dad. <gasps> do you love your dad, Tucker? You do? <laughs> Look at Tucker's ears are so cute. Okay. Let's get into the video. Let's read some meditations. I brought with me today the same books that I brought yesterday. I brought The Year of Positive Thinking by Cindy Spiegel, which I now know her name by heart. And I brought my two favorite Melody Beatty books. So let's read from A Year of Positive Thinking uh, first. And guess what? I did bring my reading glasses. <laughs> Boo Radley is sitting right here. He is being... So sweet, you guys, I have to show you this. It's gonna, this is, look how sweet he is. I don't know if you can see, hold on. Boo Radley, what are you doing, bud? He said, well, I'm just being a sweetly over here. I turned the camera off when I was turning the, the ring light back around. Okay, I was gonna ring from the year, po read, I was gonna read from a year of positive thinking, but I think I'm just gonna uh, dive right into the Melody Baby today. So let's go to the language of letting go. January 22nd. Do you remember that song back in the day? January, February, March, April. I don't remember that song, but I do know that there was a song. I just don't know the words to it. <laughs> okay, let's see what this is about today. Uh, January, appreciate it, appreciating our past, January 22nd. It is easy to be negative about past mistakes and unhappiness, but it is much more healing to look at ourselves and our past in the light of experience, acceptance, and growth. Our past is a series of lessons that advance us to higher levels of living and loving. The relationships we entered, stayed in, or ended taught us necessary lessons. Some of us have emerged from the most painful circumstances with strong insights about who we are and what we want. Our mistakes, necessary. Our frustrations, failures, and sometimes stumbling attempts at growth and progress, necessary too. Each step of the way we learned, <clears throat> we went through exactly the experiences we needed to, to become who we are today. Each step of the way we progressed. Is our past a mistake? No. The only mistake we can make is mistaking that for the truth. Today, God help me let go of negative thoughts I may be harboring about my past circumstances or relationships. I can accept with gratitude all that has been brought, all that has brought me to today. I love this meditation so much. You guys, I just love these Melody Beatty books. They're just my favorites. But I love this uh, meditation so much because it really is talking a lot about what we were talking about yesterday, which is forgiveness and, or what I was talking about yesterday. The idea of forgiveness, of accepting the past, um, not that what happened was okay, but that it happened and now what are we going to do about it? You know, and I think that's where I have learned in life, you know, through my sponsor and other people that situations that are, you know, dealt to us or situations that we're going through in life are really learning experiences. They're opportunities for growth. Whether or not we choose to take those is up to us, you know, and, um, I kind of love that idea now. Um, there was a period of my life that I did not. Um, I think, you know, it's hard sometimes you know, when things are going good and you're reaping the benefits of the 
of your life, of your journey, it's easy to say, oh, life is a journey and there's ups and downs. But when you're in the middle of like some really devastating stuff, like, you know, when I lost my mom and my aunt and my uncle and relationships ending that I went through and whatever, it was really hard for me in that moment to say, yeah, this is a journey. You know, it's like, ask somebody when they're going through, like I always, you know, say the, my Angelo quote on here, when you're going through the biggest, uh, you know, tragedy in your life, look up and say, thank you. Tell somebody that that's going through the biggest tragedy in their life. You know, like that's hard. Like since I started saying that, I've gone through some tough stuff on here, you know, and it's like in that moment, it's like, to sit there to my higher power and say, thank you, I know there was a valuable lesson down the road, or at least, like Melody Beatty says, at least I'll learn that I'm stronger than I thought I was, right? But in that moment, it hurts, it's painful. It's like, I can't be really grateful for the journey in that moment, but in all honesty, that's the trick, right? Like, that's the magic to all of it, is realizing in those tough moments, to be grateful for the journey, you know? Um, I've always said for a long time that life, and whenever I say this, people think I'm saying the better. Life is the bitter and the sweet. It's like bittersweet, right? It's like, it, we wouldn't appreciate all the fantastic, beautiful, amazing things that happened to us in our life if we didn't have, you know, times that weren't as great. Now, I think the majority of us would really like to have all good times. Who wouldn't, right? But you know, one of the things that's really made me appreciate, it's really made me appreciate in the last couple of years, and I've said this on my vlog, and I said it enough to the point where people were getting sick and tired of me saying it, but was the idea of being really grateful for just days where we're content. I think we look at most of our life and most of our days as high highs and low lows. But the reality is, there's a lot of four, five, six, and sevens in there, you know? And I have to tell you that I've had a lot of pretty good four, five, six, and seven days. Does that mean just because they're not eight, nine, tens, or one, two, threes, that they don't stand out in my life? No, I wouldn't want an entire life of tens and ones, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I can't even imagine living a life that was all tens or all ones or all tens and ones, you know? I'm talking about if you rate your day on that kind of scale. But to look at your life, you know, in a way where you can be grateful for a day that it's just like, well, the weather was nice and, you know, like, um, nobody passed away today in my life. Nobody got sick and I had a great meal and I got to spend some time with my loved ones and I did good work today and on and on and on. I think like to be able to be appreciative of being content, you know, I think is a really valuable lesson that I've learned in the last couple of years. So I think, you know, it's also like it says in here to look back on your life. I think if we if, if we go back and we look at those mistakes and we go God I wish that had never happened then we're when we're ignoring the lesson learned as well or we're also ignoring like the growth that we've made you know um, it's like uh, when you look at like a, a sports team that it's always funny because I do sports analogies but like I don't really watch a lot of sports you know it's interesting like when you're training to do some anything you know like a sport or whatever it's like. You learn how to get better by, you know, challenging yourself through those hard times. You don't, like, very few athletes just step on the field and they're that good, like, right away, you know? Um, it just, it, it takes some challenging yourself and making some mistakes and learning from it and whatever. It's like the greatest chef in the world, the greatest baker in the world, you know, didn't learn how to be the greatest chef the first time that they were, they made a lot of mistakes. They had to learn through that, right? And it's appreciating that. And then also being able to pass that on to somebody else so that when you're that chef or that baker and you're teaching somebody else how to make chocolate chip cookies down the road, you say, well, this is what you do. Like, oh, I made that mistake. Don't do that, right? And I think that that's the value in passing on our life experiences to other people. And then as we're going in life, it's ours to be willing to open up, be open enough to accept those experiences and listen to other people. You know, I was closed much of my life where I just wouldn't listen to what other people had to say. And I just always thought I knew everything. I mean, this was, you know, five, 10 years, 20 years ago. And I realized, you know, especially with like my dad, my dad would always give me like, and I'd be like, oh, he's older. He doesn't know, you know, until I realized that the only reason my dad was giving me that advice was because he wanted the best for me. And typically people, when they give you advice or suggestions based on their own mistakes in their life, it's because they want you to learn. They want you to be successful. You know, they want you to grow as a result of all of that. So anyway, I love that meditation. All right. Let's read from Melody Beatty, Journey to the Heart. Let me put my reading glasses on. First of all, bum, bum, bum. Tucker has been running all around. How about you, Tucker? January, he's right over here now. Come on. You want to come up here? <laughs> He's so funny. January 22nd. Open to the power of comfort, Tucker. Packed in the back of my Jeep, I stored my favorite red woolen blanket. I didn't need it for warmth because I didn't sleep in the cold. I needed it to remind me of the importance of comfort. 
Open yourself to receive, com I like that, I like that. Open yourself to receive comfort, the comfort that touches the heart and nurtures the soul. Many of us grew up and lived our lives without experiencing true comfort, true nurturing. Many of us didn't know it existed, but at some level, that's what we've been looking for. Comfort is the loving arms of mother, uh, comfort is the loving arms of a mother who sees only the beauty of her child. A mother who attends to the needs, who nurtures the heart and soul of her child. This kind of comfort is acceptance and love at its finest. Open your heart to receive comfort. Learn to give it too. Comfort touches and heals our souls. Take it with you like a favorite blanket wherever you go. If you watch my vlog, you know that in the la or my booktube channel, you know that in the last year I have become like just obsessed with reading cozy mysteries, and it's this whole genre that I didn't even know existed. Cozy, <laughs> cozy mysteries, you know, and they always take place in like kind of like these small towns, and somebody always inherits like a Victorian house, and they open like a pastry shop or you know like a baked goods shop or a, a you know a knitting store or whatever. Or my favorite is she's a CIA assassin that comes to, uh, this is from Janet DeLeon's Misfortune series, but she comes to uh, Sinful, Louisiana and opens a private investigation firm, you know? So it's, but it's always like this small town thing. And it was funny because I listen to books very, very fast and because I can just retain the information that quickly. And I've always been able to do that. I don't know how, but like I was listening to my book last night, my Misfortune series, and um, I'm on book eight. 17 now and there was a part when um fortune who's the main character and these two older women that she she she's friends with uh uh ida bell and gertie they're like they always meet in the kitchen to have like these meetings about like whatever murder has been going on or mystery and i and gertie like gets out the apple pie and somebody makes a pot of coffee and i like rewound that part like twice those are the parts that i'm always really attracted to so like going back to the beginning of this video it's like I like the idea of comfort and lighting a lot of candles and having cozy blankets around. It's why I like to make my bed like all cozy and stuff like that. And that's been something that like I have received so much joy over in the last year. The idea of just kind of nesting in comfort, you know? I think that like we really minimize how that really soothes our soul. You, you don't have to have a five or 10,000 square foot house or a 1,500 square foot house. You can have a, you know, 500 square foot apartment and you can make it the, the nest of the century, you know? You could make the cutest little area, have a little reading nook in the corner with a pillow and some blankets, you know? And I don't know, paint the walls a color that make you happy and have a few candles around the room that make you happy. It doesn't, like some plants, plants make me so happy. You don't have to have a whole lot for that, you know? But I think the idea of staying in comfort is um, so important. There was something in here that I wanted to, um, hold on a second. I know Tucker, want, he, he, you guys can't see this, but he's like pawing at me. Cause he, I, oh, I'm in April, that's why I can't find it. Um, where was it? Open yourself to the power of comfort. There was a line in here that I wanted to, um, you know, I, I came from, it talks in here about a mother. I came from, uh, a family of nurturing, even though I came from an alcoholic home. Like, I received a lot of nurturing when I was growing up for my family. But I think that even as we grow older, that's something that we continue to seek out, and that is okay, you know? What was this? I wanted to say something in here. Now I can't remember um, what it was. But at some, okay, many of us didn't know it existed, but at some level, that's what we've been looking for. Comfort is the loving arms of a mother. This kind of comfort is acceptance and love at its fineness. I mean, I think that, you know, we're always looking for any kind of, like, idea of feeling at home, you know, it's kind of interesting. So when I, um, the night that I went into treatment, my dad came out and found me and, um, I had totaled my car and he said that, um, I had started walking back to my apartment and I was like in boxer shorts and <laughs> like boots and a leather jacket. I don't know why anyway, but it was like sub zero outside. It was cold. And my, it was like very, very cold outside. My dad said freezing. And um, my dad said that when he found me, I was walking over the interstate and that I kept on just saying over and over and over, and I was in a complete blackout. I kept on saying, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. And my dad, he, to this day, he says, it was like this very eerie thing. Like it wasn't like you wanted to go home like to your apartment. He said it was almost kind of like this ethereal home that you were talking about, you know? I think there was a sense in all of us of going home again, of finding home, you know? And what that means, and I think that means safety and security, love and comfort that, you know, sometimes a person is a home for us, you know? It's not necessarily where we live or where we're at or where we stay and what, you know, what our place looks like. I think often it's, you know, our dogs or, you know, our cats or 
our birds or our partner or our friends or whatever, you know? And I think that makes a home too. So it's like, you know, I, I think as I have realized that as years have gone by and my circle of friends has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and I spend so much time with my dogs and I've made my home like candles lit everywhere and artwork that I like like that makes me happy it makes me safe and comfortable and I really feel like it has soothed my soul and helped my soul get to this point of peace and serenity and that I don't live in chaos and toxicity as much anymore and I think that really has been a help to that which sounds crazy, doesn't it? That like getting some sheets that make you happy or lighting some candles that smell good. I mean, this one over here is gingerbread and something that smells so good right now. It's like, you know, doing that. <laughs> I went, <laughs> but doing that, you know, sometimes I think really, really helps us get to a point where um, we can find comfort and love in our souls. You know, I think it's like, People go into, you know, uh, rehab centers to help them improve their physical health so that they can be in an environment, you know, that will help them be more successful. Well, if we're trying to, uh, you know, have our souls recover and be more peaceful and serene, and we're trying to help our souls, you know, also, which uh, ourselves, our souls, you know, um, move away from toxicity and, and chaos, it's like, to have a place that when you walk in, you feel like I'm home, you know, and it has that comfort, that comfort, comfortability, it has that level of peace and serenity, then, you know, probably your soul is, our souls are going to uh, continue to uh, flourish and, you know, what's the word I was looking for? Flourish and I don't know the other word I was looking for, you know, and be nourished off of that as well, don't you think? I think so. So anyway. So think about this weekend. Think about, you know, what's a couple ways that I could change my environment to make it even, you know, cozier than it already is or to bring some, maybe you don't like cozy. Maybe you like minimalist and white walls, but what's something that to you would make your surroundings more comfortable that when you get up every day, you look around and you go, I'm at home. Anyway, I love you guys. And uh, let me know what you think about that in the comment section below and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.